welcome back to my channel. Today is going to be the first video of a bunch of fall slash spooky themed videos. Today is mostly just going to be uh, fall kind of aesthetic recommendations, just books to get us started in fall. And so I am super excited. I am super pumped. So I'm going to uh, give you some recommendations to start off your fall and then later on I'll come out with spooky recommendations and then 10 books that I'm going to be reading this fall slash spooky season. So I'm going to have like a lovely string of videos just based on the season and I am super excited for all of those. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started with today's video of just fall recommendations, autumn aesthetic recommendations. So the first recommendation I have is a book that is a little on the shorter side because I think for a lot of us school is starting back up again or at least for me school is starting back up again and so it's getting very busy and I'm not reading as much as I was or as much as I was hoping to be so the first one I'm suggesting is a shorter book that's been pretty popular and that is the Tea Dragon Society this is an amazing book and I've talked about it before but if you are not reading as much as you used to and it's kind of getting on you for that and you're just not feeling as good this is such a short read that you can read it in like 10 minutes and then you can feel good and you can be like i finished a book this week so and i think this one is very good for spring or fall the reason i say fall for this year is because it's about tea you know it's there are these little dragons and you can harvest like leaves off their horns and little parts of them to make this tea and i think like, I drink tea all year round, even, like, hot tea, even in, like, the spring and summer. But fall is really when, like, everyone else joins me in this tea craze. So I would say that this is really good to get you in the mood for drinking some hot tea as the weather starts to get a little cooler. Now, a lot of the genres, or at least for me, overall in fall, there are certain genres that just appeal to me more or seem more like fall reads. Like, uh, historical fiction for me, as well as kind of more of a historical romance, uh, mystery, because you can, anything that you can really, like, cozy up to. Like, you can cozy up to a good mystery or cozy up to a good romance or cozy up to um, something nostalgic, too, like... One, one of the series I'm going to recommend is very nostalgic for me, so anything that like gets you that warm, fuzzy feeling, whether it's solving a mystery or going back in time or just reading something familiar that just brings back happy memories. So that's kind of what the rest of these books are based off of for this video. So the next book that I'm going to recommend is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern, and I am recommending this one because it is a story that you can cozy cozy up to, like cozy on up to. It does have to do with magic and it's like a magical competition but it's only between two people and they don't know who each other are and they didn't even set up the competition and it's like this really intense, really like psychological, magical competition that takes place within a circus and so while circuses generally tend to be more of a summer thing, I just felt it was much more of a cozy fall read just because of the story of everything that's going on in the circus and the magic of it. It just makes it, it just makes it seem like it's fit for being wrapped up in blankets and just reading about these people trying to outdo one another in magic within the setting of a circus that's only open at night. This one I read last year and I very much enjoyed it. Uh, the next one that I am going to recommend is half historical fiction, half not. And that is um, Juliet by Anne Fautier. And this is, it goes back and forth between like the traditional story of Romeo and Juliet, but then also modern times as Juliette Ptolemy is kind of figuring out what happened to Romeo and Juliet and how it affects her as like the great 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 whatever granddaughter of Romeo and Juliet or maybe Romeo or so she she's an American who goes to Italy to kind of find out her family history and how it relates to uh, the Shakespearean story that we all know is Romeo and Juliet but what we may not actually know about this story um, that Shakespeare has changed around and I I read this one last year and I really enjoyed it it, it is, like I said, it's like half historical fiction, and then the half that isn't historical fiction is like kind of mystery, kind of figuring things out. 
And so I think both halves of it is perfect for fall <laughs> because you've got that historical element, but then you've also got like a mystery to cozy up to. So I'm gonna say cozy up to so many times in this video. It's gonna be amazing. So yeah, I would very much recommend this book as well. It just brought me so much joy. I, I know I was laughing in some places. Like the main character's sister, oh my gosh, I love her. I love her. I didn't at first, but I ended the book loving her. So I think the side characters in here are really what makes it. Not the main character, the side characters are what make this book. Next, I'm gonna suggest a trilogy. And this trilogy to me is very nostalgic because I read it when I was younger and I have reread it actually a couple of times. And that is the Chemical Garden trilogy and especially the first one, Wither. Um, I really enjoyed this trilogy and it's one of, if you liked the selection, you're gonna like this a lot because it's a similar idea of this girl kind of gets like kidnapped or taken, she has no other choice but to um, win over the heart of this really rich guy who lives in a mansion. But at the same time, she is separated from her brother, her twin brother, and so she is kind of living in this place where she gets all dolled up for the master of the house, but then she's like trying to figure out how to escape in order to find her brother. And just the story of it, just, I, I loved it. It's been a little bit since I've read it, so I might want to reread it again, but I just, I just remember loving this so much when I was younger when I first read it, and every time I've reread it since. Um, and like, if you look, look at the cover, it, the cover has almost a spooky feeling with like the bird in the cage and how it like relates to the wedding ring, but then it's like, oh, you've got like these white flowers on the back. It gives spooky vibes, but I think it's more of a just generic fall read than spooky. Like there's nothing spooky about it, but it's, it's such a sweet story with all three of these books for her to go find her brother and kind of balance her life in this dystopian world. So the next series that I'm going to suggest uh, is interesting because I'm suggesting the Wayward Children series by Shauna McGuire. And the thing is, is that I love, I love, love, love the series. I know some other people who are like, oh, I hated it. I didn't like it at all, but I absolutely adored it. And it's like the first time reading it, I instantly got this nostalgic feeling because it's reading about all these different kids who went through different doorways to different like magical worlds and there are some worlds that are like chaotic and kind of evil but some worlds are like chaotic but good and some worlds are just kind of good and some worlds are just kind of like what are you what you went to like wonderland kind of place um and it does and some of the worlds have a wonderland vibe some of it's like like the underworld land of the death vibes and so i think that series is amazing to read in the fall because you're hearing of all these different almost fairy tale like stories coming from these kids but the first one is actually um solving a murder mystery in the school for the kids who just can't move on since coming back from these fantasy worlds and it when i read it it was so cozy and i i was entranced by it and each book is very short so again it's very easy and very fast to read through them plus the cover of the first one is like you know, it's a doorway and it's got fall colors and that just instantly makes me gravitate towards fall because it just, it itself recognizes that it's a fall book and I appreciate that. So, if you haven't already, you should read that. Now we're getting into the books that I don't own but I have read and the next one I would suggest is Ninth House by Leigh Bardugo. I, again, I read this last year when it, I read this when it came out. It's a dark academia magical book um, about this girl who kind of goes and she investigates within the magical scene of the university and it's it's like a murder mystery it's it, like I said it's just dark academia and I I liked it I did enjoy it it wasn't really my favorite like I just kind of had meh about it but I know a lot of people like it and I can definitely see how it's fall vibes because like Everyone's going back to school. It is fall. It's kind of starting off the school year. And so really anything that has its story set in fall automatically really can be a fall read. Um, but a lot of the books I suggested before this were just like, it's not set in fall or not necessarily in fall, but it still feels like fall. Um, but this one is set in fall. And so I think it definitely, um, 
definitely would be a good read for fall if you're like into that kind of stuff. The last book that I'm going to suggest is The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. This one, I'm recommending it, but it also wasn't my favorite. It's another one of those, like, if you guys love reading mysteries in the fall because it's a story that you can, like, wrap around in blankets and just be entrapped by, then you may enjoy this, but I... I just didn't quite like it. It was really hard to follow the logic of the story and then halfway through the book to me it became a little predictable or just like this is driving me nuts. I bet it's going to be like this and just the end. But I think that not everyone agrees with me in that sense. Like I know a lot of people that really loved it. Um, so if you really are just looking for like all the mystery books that you can find or without being necessarily like horror or thriller if you're not into those vibes either because it's not Halloween yet or you just aren't which is totally okay um, then this would be a good one to go for because this guy keeps he lives the same day over and over again but he switches between which person he's living the day as and he has to solve the mystery of who killed Evelyn Hardcastle but because he keeps switching people and reliving the same day she keeps dying so it's like you would think you should be able to just solve it, but no, it's not that easy. So yeah, the last two books I'm recommending, not necessarily because I love them, but because they are definitely fall aesthetic, and I think other people will definitely love them. Uh, <laughs> so those are all of my recommendations for this fall. Um, again, I tried to make them not quite as like spooky themes. Like A lot of them do still have magic, but that's just because I love reading. Uh, fantasy YA yeah so if you like this recommendations video comment down below letting me know if you're gonna read any of these books or what other books you're gonna read this fall um, I'm always looking for more fall recommendations like I have the video of, or like I know some books I'm gonna read this fall but I'm always looking for more always um, so like comment down below like this video if you're gonna read any of the books in here or if you agree with any of the books that I said that would be a fall aesthetic then like like the video <laughs> also subscribe if you're new here and we would love to have you join our army of reading warriors um and yeah so i think that's pretty much all i have to say i'll see you guys in the next video but until then happy reading